So in this video, we are going to be talking about Mary's confusion. Okay, so we'll talk about the scenario first, followed by the plan. So I will need you to come up with a differential and a plan. Okay, and followed by a closer look at the scenario after we have a bit more information, like the examination findings, followed by the scenario review as a whole once we have the diagnosis. And finally, of course, the bite-sized bite bundle for paces that I will be giving you, which is right at the end. So it will be a summary of everything and everything that you need to know for your MRCP paces exam. So make sure you stay until the end, guys. And if you see this bell icon, make sure you pause the video and just have a think, okay? For those of you who are really motivated, want to progress your careers and pass Paces, this course is for you guys, okay? So Paces course online, I've brought together my years of um, experience in teaching doctors and also students to bring together lots of different frameworks and useful material, including top presentations that come up in Paces that I have written myself lots of frameworks that you can use from day one all the way up to paces as well as plenty of downloadable material that i have put together just for you okay this is exclusive to the course lots of people are finding value make sure you go check it out the description is down below and because you have subscribed to my youtube you're watching my uh, videos on youtube i've also created a code just for you guys so you make sure you use the code when you are getting the course for yourself okay go check it out the scenario is Mary is a 64-year-old lady who has been admitted due to worsening confusion. Okay, Her past medical history uh, includes hypertension, type 2 diabetes, she's got insulin uh, for her diabetes as well, and she is a current smoker. So a few things going on in the past medical history. Okay, She, uh, with the ambulance crew, um, she was noted that uh, she was responsive to voice, so not really alert properly. So she was responding, but uh, not great, okay? So she's confused as well. Her heart rate is 110, blood pressure was uh, 96 over 45 with the ambulance crew. Respiratory rate of about 20, so slightly raised, uh, and sets of 98% on air, so that's fine. And the temperature is also normal, 37.1 degrees. So, on arrival to a &E, she's confused, okay, which we know about. She's disorientated to time, place, and person. That's what TPP means, okay? In a &E, she's treated as possible sepsis. She gets treated for that. She gets given IV comoxiclav uh, and fluids, and she gets referred to you, the medical registrar, okay? Now, what do you think? What are your differentials, guys? And what is the further management that you want to do? Okay, we'll come to uh, the rest of the information in a second. While you're having a think, also make sure you click on that subscribe button and the like button because this will help with the YouTube algorithm and push the video out to more of your friends and colleagues and help the channel grow and, you know, help people get more educated. Okay, so have you had a think? So let's get back to the video. So these are the differentials, I think, you know, as a medical registrar uh, for a patient who's come on with confusion. There are a whole, literally dozens of um, differentials when it comes to this sort of situation. But these are the sort of things perhaps that you would be thinking about, okay? Sepsis, possibly, that's what a &E team thought. Encephalitis is definitely one of them. So a uh, new onset of uh, confusion with a high heart rate uh, in um, kind of a middle-aged person. Hypoglycemia, remember she's um, got insulin on board, right, for her type 2 diabetes. So clearly her di uh, diabetes is not great. Uh, so it's very likely she may have been going through a hypoglycemic episode and earlier on we didn't know what her blood sugar was okay i deliberately didn't give it to you because we need to have hypoglycemia as a differential okay diabetic ketoacidosis is another key differential of course that's the other end of the spectrum so to speak where you have uncontrolled uh, diabetes and you are in a diabetic ketoacidosis uh, emergency um, again, we don't know the blood sugar, we don't know the, we don't know the uh, venous blood gas uh, acid-based status, so we don't really know at this point, okay? So we need to keep a wide uh, differential list. Intracerebral bleeding, that's also possible. Uh, spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage can happen if someone has got an arterial venous malformation, aneurysm, stuff like that, okay? So uh, it's possible. 
Delirium secondary to a multitude of other causes, you know, constipation, electrolyte imbalances, lots of different causes can cause confusion, right? So these are the sort of things that perhaps you would be thinking about as a medical registrar attending the patient. Drug overdose is possible. We know she is on a few medications because she's uh, got a past medical history, but we don't really know much more than that. And on top of that, she can have drug overdose of other medications as well, right? So these are the things uh, that you would be thinking about. So here's the story. You arrive on the scene, okay? The medical registrar has arrived, okay? And blood tests are pending at the moment, as is almost always the case when you arrive fairly early on. Uh, you don't really have much much to go by. So you decide to talk to her husband, who, who thankfully is there, present, okay? Uh, and he reports that she has been getting generalized abdominal pains for the past two weeks with constipation, and her mood hasn't been great either. She has had uh, low mood and overall lethargy as well. Her confusion has been worsening over the last few days, and that is probably why he has asked for help. And she is a heavy smoker of about 30 to 40 cigarettes per day for the last, last 50, 50 odd years, 55 years, okay? So uh, a smoker and uh, otherwise she's known to have diabetes on insulin and she's constipated, getting lethargic and low mood for the last two weeks. Okay, so here's a closer look. On examination, you find that she appears cachectic, okay? That is always a concern, especially in a, a, someone who is younger, like 64-year-old, okay? If, if, if it was an 85-year-old, 90-year-old, then it's possible that because of their nutrition, uh, low nutrition, low appetite, they may be cachectic. But in someone like this, it's always a concern. So you have to think about think about things, okay? If something, if, whether something is wrong, the respiratory rate is a bit increased. Clubbing in both hands, okay? Now you are getting things, okay? Clubbing it always has a certain list of differentials, so you should be thinking about them. Uh, chest X-ray shows a query nodule in the right upper lobe, okay? So this is obviously concerning. ECG is normal. CT hat does not show any acute findings, thankfully, so uh, you know that there is no intracranial hemorrhage. CT abdomen, also no, uh, no acute findings, no, uh, you know, solid organ um, involvement of any kind, but she is constipated, okay? So there is some, uh, constipation has been con confirmed. Now, constipation in itself can cause delirium, but clearly there is something else going on here, okay? What do you think? Have a think. Here are the blood tests. Sodium is 137, potassium is 4.5, corrected calcium is 3.1. So here is, well, you've basically got a diagnosis here of what's, what's happening. And the ELP is also raised. Everything else is basically fine, okay? So, corrected calcium is high, ELP is high, the chest x-ray shows a nodule, she's constipated, she's been uh, confused as well. So, I, I think you should be really thinking about what's going on here. I'm sure you would get the diagnosis by now. So, what's your diagnosis, guys? This is basically what's going on. So, she's got hypercalcemia, secondary to bronchial malignancy, bronchial cancer, and specifically, it is a squamous cell lung carcinoma, okay? It's squamous cell is the, is the key thing that you have to remember here. This is the paraneoplastic phenomenon um, where they get hypercalcemia, okay? So, let's talk about Mary first. Let's bring everything together so that things make sense, okay? Confusion of insidious onset is what she's coming with. It's not sudden, okay? It's not like she was well one minute and then suddenly she was not, okay? If she, if that was the case, then that suggests a vascular event, acute vascular event, like an intracranial hemorrhage, okay? Short history of abdominal pain, but not so short that it's an acute abdomen, okay? So uh, a few days to a couple of weeks is suggestive of constipation rather than you know one moment she's okay and the next moment she's complaining of uh, pain and she can't move at all because she's got peritonism that is suggestive of an acute abdomen that's not the case here okay cachexia clubbing and hypercalcemia all of that is there so you need to put everything together okay and a background of heavy smoking with a chest x-ray finding of a nodule okay 
and of course you need to think about her symptoms so she's got this is this is a little mnemonic not a mnemonic but a little phrase that you can remember okay uh will help you with your memory for hypercalcemia so it's bones groans moans and stones bones is bony pain she didn't have that on this occasion groans is abdominal pain so abdominal pain can happen due to uh constipation renal colic okay moans is low mood which she had and stones renal stones okay we don't know whether she's got it probably not because it, it wasn't picked up on the ct abdomen so this is the phrase that you would remember for uh hypercalcemia here's the biceps bundle so i hope so far things make sense so she has got hyper uh, hypercalcemia secondary to malignancy so in the case of squamous cell um, lung cancer there is a release of a pth related peptide okay pth parathyroid hormone related, related peptide that's what happens and that is why you get a uh, um, hypercalcemia in this sort of situation in terms of the features these are the main things you need to be thinking about so confusion which is what she came in with bony pains she didn't have that abdominal pains constipation renal stones and dehydration and this is the phrase that we talked about that will help you with remembering hypercalcemia so this phrase is not uh, specific to cancers it's specifically for hypercalcemia of any cause okay bones groans moans and stones what investigations should we, should you be thinking about so in terms of the diagnostic stuff it's the usual things but you also need the uh, bone profile okay but of course if you are doing bone profile you should also be thinking about doing a parathyroid hormone because if the uh, calcium is raised you need to think about whether the parathyroid is also involved okay in terms of the underlying cause of the hypercalcemia obviously you need to investigate this a bit more so chest x-ray which she had so that showed a nodule followed by a ct of the chest abdomen and pelvis that will show whether or not there's any underlying malignancy to explain the hypercalcemia and bronchoscopy and biopsy if it shows something okay so that will tell you and that will give you a tissue diagnosis of whether this is uh, squamous cell lung cancer Serumase is for sarcoidosis, okay? So calcium can be raised in granulomatous diseases like, like sarcoidosis. And the way to go about uh, looking for it is by doing a serumase in the first instance. But you would also need to do things like CT chest up to pelvis down the line if need be. Most likely they will need it if, if you're suspecting sarcoidosis. In terms of the management for hypercalcemia specifically, in the acute setting, the first, um, first step is always hydration and you hydrate with uh, saline, okay? So in these patients, they are dehydrated. So you always hydrate first and foremost and you give kind of quite aggressive saline uh, therapy. Always look up the management, but usually it's kind of the first bag is, first liter is over the first hour and then you, you carry on from there, okay? So that's what you do and you would also keep them on a monitored bed uh, especially if their calcium is above three and uh, keep an eye on their ecg other thing that you would be thinking about is permidronate infusion especially if their calcium is not responding to the saline management okay if you're not getting an adequate response of uh, the calcium coming down after giving saline you would think about permidronate infusion in the longer term, it's mainly about managing the underlying cause. So in this uh, in this situation, it would be the underlying cancer. Okay, that's the management. Otherwise, they wouldn't really respond to treatment. So that's that's the that's the case, guys. I hope it makes sense. Make sure you take a screenshot of this, and also make sure you check out the uh, book that I brought out uh, last year, and also the updated paces course online, which I've talked about earlier on. Make sure you uh, use the code, guys. Okay. So I will see you in the next video. Give it a thumbs up. Take care.